All right, everyone, get ready, because today we are diving into some pretty wild stuff, even for us. We're talking AI, but not just any AI, AI that's taking on Wall Street. Taking it on and winning, potentially. Yeah, I, you're not kidding. This article I came across, it claims that someone used an AI to actually build a trading strategy that's making some serious waves. It's more than just the success that has everyone buzzing. It's how they did it. We're not talking about some complex algorithm here. Right. This wasn't about just programming in some secret formula. Exactly. This is about giving the AI a goal, a desired outcome, if you will, yeah. and then letting the AI figure out how to get there. Okay. So we're talking about a whole new level of AI, right? Like yeah. this isn't just AI following instructions. This is AI strategizing. And that's where things get really interesting because this article focuses on a new open AI model. They call it the strawberry model. And this thing, it seems to get market strategy on a whole other level. Okay, so what makes this strawberry model so special? We've talked about other AI models on the show before, so what sets this one apart? Well, think of it this way. Imagine trying to explain to someone how to, let's say, ride a bike versus handing them a physics textbook on balance and motion. I see where you're going with this. The older models, they're like that textbook. Great with data, don't get me wrong, but not so much with that intuitive feel, you know? Okay, so then this strawberry model, it's like it's actually learn to ride the bike. Precisely. This new model, this O1 Mini, as it's formally known, it seems to have a more nuanced understanding of market dynamics, at least compared to older models like, say, GPT-4. So instead of just crunching numbers, this O1 Mini is thinking more like, what, a seasoned trader? Like, it's recognizing patterns and then making judgment calls based on those patterns. Now you're getting it. The article highlighted how the user actually connected the O1 Mini to this platform called Nexus Trade. Nexus Trade? What is that? It basically lets you manage portfolios, you know your investments, using plain language. Interesting. It's really quite clever. The user told the AI to create a portfolio called Omni with $10,000. Okay. And then they specified a strategy using common trading lingo, things like SMA crossover, which is basically a buy or sell signal based on moving averages. Wait, hold on. Back up a second. SMA crossover, Nexus trade. I mean, I know we want to get to the exciting stuff here, but for those of us who don't speak fluent Wall Street, can we break down some of these terms? Of course. Of course. So imagine you plot the average price of a stock over a certain time, let's say 50 days. Okay. I'm picturing it. That's your moving average. Now picture another line. Same thing, but the average price over a shorter period, say 10 days. Got it. When that shorter term average crosses above the longer term average, Boom. That's your SMA crossover. Which often means? Often seen as a buy signal by traders. Okay. And Nexus trade. Think of it like a really user-friendly dashboard for all your investments. Got it. Okay. So the user basically gave the AI instructions, kind of like a human trader might receive, but instead of the trader then, you know, manually making the trades, the AI handled it all. Exactly. But, and here's where it gets really wild, the AI didn't just blindly follow the instructions. It actually, and this is highlighted in the article, automatically built in what's called a take profit strategy. Take profit. Ooh, okay, explain it to me like I'm five. What's that? All right, so imagine you tell the AI, hey, if this stock goes up by 10%, sell it. Lock in those profits. Okay. That, in essence, is a take profit order. It automatically sells when, you guessed it, you hit your desired profit level. Wow. And this AI built that in on its own. So it's not just following orders. It's actively managing risk and maximizing gains. That's incredible. But okay, before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, and I am dying to hear how this strategy actually performed, let's rewind just a bit. What was it about the O1 Mini's approach specifically that allowed it to, and I can't believe I'm saying this, supposedly outperform even the S&P 500? It all comes down to, well, the Owen Mini's ability to actually strategize. Remember that SMA crossover we talked about? Yeah, the buy signal. Right. So both the Owen Mini and that older GPT-4 model, they both used it to trade this tech-heavy index, TQQQ. Okay. But here's the difference. The older model, it would sell as soon as the price went up even a little bit. Playing it safe, sure, but missing out on potential gains. So kind of like, what, a nervous trader who sells at the first sign of profit, yeah. afraid of the market turning against them? You got it. The O1 Mini, on the other hand, this thing, it seemed to understand that sometimes you got to be bolder. 
It, it held on to its TQQQ positions for longer, let those profits run, and that ultimately led to those crazy returns. Okay, that makes sense. But hold on. The article mentioned the AI achieved a 268% return. Like, what does that actually look like? For those of us who don't have stock tickers permanently seared into our brains, break it down for us. 268%. That's like turning a $10,000 investment into $36,800. In the same time frame, the S&P 500, much more modest gain, more in line with, you know, typical market stuff. So this AI, it blew it out of the water. No question. However, and this is a big however, these were back tests. Right. Simulations like testing a sports car on a video game versus, you know, taking it out on the Autobahn. Exactly. So the million dollar question is how would this strategy actually perform in the real market? Mm. You know, real money at stake. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Did this guy, did he actually, well, did he take the AI for a spin in the real world? He did. The article says the user was impressed enough with those backtesting results that he decided to actually deploy the O1 mini strategy with real money. Gulp. I mean, that's incredible, but also kind of terrifying, right? It's like, okay, AI, you've got this right. You've got my money. Don't crash the car. It's a risk, no doubt. And the article doesn't say how this whole real-time experiment is going, but it does highlight a pivotal moment. How so? This isn't theoretical anymore. This is a real-world example of AI making investment decisions that could impact someone's, well, their financial future. It makes you wonder, even if this specific strategy doesn't work long term, what does it tell us about the future of AI and its role in, well, not just finance, but in all sorts of decision making? It really points to a future where AI isn't just a tool for analysis, but a potential partner in making complex decisions. Using its ability to process huge amounts of data, identify patterns that, frankly, we might miss entirely. However, and this is crucial, it also raises some important questions. Like, how much can we really trust these systems? We're talking about handing over the reins to something that, let's be honest, we don't fully understand. That, my friend, is the heart of what's known as the black box problem in AI. These systems, especially these newer ones like O1 Mini, they're becoming so complex that even their creators don't always fully grasp how they arrive at their decisions. So it's like, I don't know, trusting a chef who won't tell you their secret ingredient. The dish might be amazing, but you're always left wondering, what am I eating? Perfect analogy. <laughs> and in this case, the dish is a financial portfolio, potentially someone's retirement fund. That's why transparency in AI is so crucial. If we're going to trust these systems with big decisions, we need to be able to understand how they think. It's not just about the results. It's about being able to peek inside that black box, see the process in action. But here's where my brain goes next. If this AI can seemingly get the stock market, what other complex systems could it unravel? What else could it teach us? That's a billion-dollar question, isn't it? Where else could we use this? Right. If AI can navigate the stock market, why not healthcare? Healthcare, okay, yeah. AI analyzing medical data, personalizing treatments, even predicting outbreaks. Wow. Or picture this, AI optimizing city infrastructure. Okay, like smarter traffic lights, things like that. More than that, imagine AI that understands traffic flow reduces energy consumption all across the city. Okay, so bigger picture stuff. It's like we're on the edge of something huge here, right? And we've talked about some big ideas on the show before, but this this feels different. It is different. This isn't just theory anymore, but, you know, we've been talking big picture. What about the average person? How does this impact their daily life? Yeah, good point. What does this all mean for the average Joe listening to us right now? It's already happening. You get those eerily accurate movie recommendations, right? Yeah. Spam folder magically blocking all the junk. Okay, true. That's AI. But you're saying that's just the start. The tip of the iceberg. Think bigger. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Education tailored to you, specifically, how you learn best. Okay. Personalized learning. I like it. What else? Your own virtual assistant, not just setting appointments, actually managing your finances seamlessly. Okay. Now that would be life-changing. And then, of course, self-driving cars. Ugh. The daily commute transformed. No more wasted time. Just pure relaxation or productivity. So we're talking about efficiency on a massive scale in every aspect of life, practically. Exactly. But, and I do have a but here, what about the downsides? I mean, there's got to be downsides. Of course. What about jobs? What happens to the people whose jobs become automated? That's a valid concern. It's something we need to be thinking about right now. We have to be proactive. And what about bias? Crucial point. If AI is trained on biased data, it's going to make biased decisions. It's not all rosy, then. We can't just blindly embrace AI, can we? Exactly. It's not a silver bullet. It's about approaching this new technology with caution. 
with a critical eye. So how do we do that? How do we make sure it's a force for good? We need to make sure it's developed responsibly, ethically, with a focus on benefiting everyone. This is way more than just lines of code, isn't it? This is about how we want to live, how we want society to function. It's about harnessing this power, absolutely, but also being aware of its limitations and its potential pitfalls. And that's why we talk about this stuff, right? To get people thinking. Exactly. The more we understand AI, the better equipped we are to navigate this future. Well said. We went way beyond can AI beat the market today, didn't we? I think we're now contemplating AI's role in the very fabric of our world. It's about asking those questions, the tough ones, the ones that make us uncomfortable. And on that note, I think we'll wrap up this deep dive here. Always more to explore. To everyone listening, keep those questions coming. And as always, thanks for taking the deep dive with us.